Welcome back, MTG Joe here. We're gonna be kicking off another budget deck. Um, so I did the budget build series for Mono Black. That's the three parts where we take a budget build and then build it towards a fully tuned version. Um, got a lot of good reception off Reddit and such from that. Um, so people are asking to do some more. I think what I'm gonna do is kind of tweak the pace in which I do it um, because a lot of people are still building up their Theros cards. I'm gonna put out a couple budget decks first, kind of the first stop. And then we'll go along building as we go through. Um, so that way people, at least if they want to start on something else, they don't have to wait for everything. They can at least get kicked off with like one or two budget variants for the time being based on the cards they open from the set. Um, so we did mono black. Now we're going to do some mono white. Uh, this is similar to the mono black. It is a 10 rare mythic uh, budget deck. Uh, and it's kind of built around Heliode, Sun Crowned, uh, so it's the Mono White God. Uh, so similar to Erebos and Mono Black, it is a 3 mana 5-5 five, five indestructible as long as our devotion to white, uh, so the number of casting symbols that are planes, is five or uh, less than 5. It's not a creature, it's just an enchantment. Uh, whenever you gain life, with uh, Helio puts a trigger on the stack that you put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature or enchantment you control. And for 2 mana, you can uh, have another creature gain lifelink until the end of turn. Um, so basically you can make all your little dorks, these huge creatures, kind of a white weenie style strategy. Um, so what we pair it with is a Linden the Steadfast Queen. So this is three mana, so almost on her own uh, she's able to turn on Heliode. Uh, so this is a three mana, three three Vigilance. Whenever a white creature you control attacks, you gain one life. So if you have five creatures attacking with Linden, you have five instances that go on the stack of the life gain, and then you can put five counters on creatures. Uh, the reason we're playing three of both of these is because they are legendary, so we don't want to draw them in multiples. Uh, we don't have a way with, like, say, um, the Royal Scions to kind of ditch the extra copies. Um, so kind of going from that. Uh, and then I'll highlight basically the rares and mythics, then we'll go through the rest of the deck. Uh, we have two Ajani Strength of the Pride. Uh, so this is a pretty solid Planeswalker in this archetype. Four mana, five loyalty, uh, plus one, you gain life equal to the number of creatures and planeswalkers you control, uh, so that can trigger Heliode as well. Minus two basically creates you and a Johnny's Pride Mate, so you have four Johnny's Pride Mate, and then the extra ones from a Johnny. So this, uh, whenever you gain life, you put a 1-1 counter on it, so this just becomes a big dumb beater. Uh, and then its zero ability is if you have at least 15 more life than your starting to life total, you exile a Johnny and each artifact or creature your opponent controls. Uh, so this can clear out their board and we can smash through with our creatures. Uh, the last two rares are two castle Arden Veils, basically a utility land that lets us create creatures uh, if we flood out or if there's multiple board wipes. Uh, if you have four of these, play four of them. It's worthwhile. Uh, and then kind of the rest of the deck is themed around utilizing life gain. In the one drop slot, we got a lot of one drops. Uh, I'll see it of Life's Bounty is a new one. It is an enchantment creature, a one mana lifelink, so it triggers Heliod on its own. And for one mana, you can sacrifice it and target creature or enchantment you control gains protection from color of your choice. So this can kind of go two folds. It can protect one of our creatures. Say, for example, they try to murderous rider down in a Johnny's Pride Mate. We can sack this and give it pro black and keep it alive. We can also say we are we could threaten lethal. We can give a Johnny's Pride Mate protection from a color, and then it can attack in without being blocked. So pretty useful card here. Uh, we're basically offsetting this with two more copies of God's Willing, which is basically a a uh, spell version of said card. Um, where we're going with four of these because they do add for the devotion on their own. Uh, Beloved Princess is kind of a budget one. Uh, I want to see how it works. So the thought process behind this, another one mana, one one life linker. Uh, it can't be blocked by creatures with power three or greater. So if our opponent's got a lot of big creatures, uh, it could have potentially pseudo unblockable if we can make it really big as well. Um, so seeing with that, it was between this and Charm Stray, which uh, gets bigger if you cast more cats, so the same name. So that upside seemed a little bit more fringe. Say, like, for example, Questing Beast can't block Beloved Princess. Uh, Fairy Godmother is a adventure two spell. So it's uh, adventure can give a creature flying for, the end, for a turn, uh, which can kind of sneak out some damage. And then it's also a one mana, one one flyer. Uh, Healer Hawk, flying, evasive, lifelink, great in this type of deck. You can make it really big and just smash over your opponent. Uh, God was willing as we highlighted, uh, Pride Mate as we highlighted. Uh, Daxos is one of the 
uncommon legendaries, so that's why we're playing three. Very good card in this deck. Two mana, two X, where X is your devotion to white for the toughness. So at the minimum, it's a two mana, two, two. Uh, really good at blocking the, the board, and it is one of the Soul Sisters archetype. So whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain a life, or when a creature dies, you also gain a life. So just a lot of ways to trigger uh, Heliod. Um, one thing that I found the deck lacked when we played on the streamer uh, showdown or streamer early access event was main board removal. Uh, we're playing four banishing lights. It's basically deals with any permanent on your opponent's battlefield and can uh, add to the devotion. That's a little bit harder to kill than like a creature. And then two Augur Arcanus Owl. So this was what was featured in the mono blue deck, um, but it is a pseudo card advantage spell for the deck. Um, it's a way for us to get some. Uh, to dig for some cards. So it gets uh, artifacts or enchantments. Uh, main board, we don't have any artifacts, but enchantments work as well. So we can hit Heliod, we can hit Banishing Light, we can hit uh, Daxos because it's an enchantment creature, as well as Alcide. So quite a few hits. We're only playing two of, but it alone does turn on Heliod at the worst case. Uh, so that's the main board. Sideboard-wise, uh, Apostle of Purifying Light kind of has two roles. If we're playing heavy black base deck uh, or heavy removal, uh, it is protection, so it can't be killed. It also can allow us on a budget to deal with their graveyard. Uh, Glass Cast gets some early removal that also can be found with the Arcanist Owl, and it is also adding to Devotion. Revoke Existence can be removal for uh, artifacts, enchantments, and enchantment creatures. It's also exile, so it can deal with the gods. Uh, Bring to Trial is basically a budget consideration for uh, Giant Killer. Um, so what it is basically exiling target creature power four or greater. It, this is basically very similar to Giant Killer, which is just destroy, but you also get the creature on Giant Killer. Uh, so if you have Giant Killers, play those instead. Uh, Conclave Tribunal, some more exile effect. Um, the Wanderer was something I want to try out. Um, if we're running into a lot of uh, red-based damage deck, it can prevent that damage. So it also stops Clarion from working, uh, the Stomp from uh, uh, Giant, um, and it also has the upside of exiling creatures with four greater. And then Arcana Style, just another one. In the Grindier matchups where we want the card advantage, I want to have another one here. Um, what I would probably play for card advantage in Lou, if you do have it, is Dawn of Hope. It's weird how it pops up. Uh, whenever you gain life, you can pay two mana and draw a card. Uh, this would be something I would probably try out as well. Um, so it's budget deck. We'll try it out. Um, fire it through a couple games. Like always, I will do uh, one or two best of ones and then... Uh, sorry, one or two best of threes and then a couple best of ones, depending on how quick the deck plays out. Um, with the budget ones, I just play ranked. Um, with the non-budgets, we'll play... Uh, unranked, sorry, budget will play unranked, non budgets or mid budgets will play uh, ranked. Uh, so let's see how it goes. Lots of talking. So, if there are any other budget decks you'd like to see, I'm probably going to do one of each of the devotion style decks um, to see how those kind of play out. Devotion's really good for a strategy wise because we don't really have to waste. Other than castles, we don't have to waste, uh, waste rare wild cards on lands. It's really hard to do budget decks for multicolor decks. Uh, this is a curve. Draw one drop. Hey, Quantum, going well? Had a big lunch today, Sunday lunch, and now just playing some magic. How about yourself? So this is part of the reason we only play three of these. We don't want to draw that many. Okay, so this is uh, one of the ramp decks. They're kind of going off. They so they don't have another land, which bodes pretty well. So one thing to keep in mind, Heliod entering the battlefield when you don't have Devotion does not count as a creature, so it doesn't trigger Daxos. So... Here we're getting the wrong half problem. Um, so I'm just gonna attack here, it's a free attack. It gains us a life. We can't block this anyways, might as well gain some life. Uh, best 
thing for next turn would be Heliode and a land uh, to play Healer Hawk. Okay, so they're getting the Risen Reef value. They're kind of going off in that sense. And they hit for two. Perfect. So I'm going to start with Heliode. Now that we have enough devotion, it's activated. Um, I'm going to put a counter on Linden here. And then I'm going to cast this and then put a counter on Hawk. We'll attack with both of these two triggers. I'm going to put them both. Um, actually, I'm going to put one here. This is big enough uh, to block Hydra Crisis now, and this is large enough that it can go through Boreal Grazers, so they can't just keep chump blocking. I really like Risen Reef. I think it's a really, it's, in a, you need a number of elementals for it to be kind of really good. Um, I don't mind this interaction. You're kind of committing to small creatures. It can get swept up with Clarion. Um, you do have to somewhat overextend to the board, so you're more likely to get impacted by sweep. This card is just, makes it really hard for traditional mid-range to work with. So we're at 24 life next turn. I can a Johnny. Can we just win next turn? Oh, mass manipulation. Okay. That sucks. Oh, this is going to be pretty funny when they don't realize Linden doesn't trigger for only uh, white creatures. Okay, so we have the Banishing Light um, here. So I can a Johnny exile their board. But I don't have lethal anyways. So I think we just go Linden this turn. Come on. I believe in you, Arena. And then next turn, I can Ajani exile their board. We have 6-9 damage. This could be Nisa. So they're getting a bit of card advantage here. I'd prefer if they just put lands into play. So I could Oblivion Ring here. Basically just want to set it up so I can kill him with a Johnny. Because they've played out a lot, but they haven't actually done much to win. Okay, what do you put a counter on? Okay, so we can go get rid of Nisa. They have these Arboreal Grazers with Reach. So it's basically just for us to gain four life this turn. They take the damage. Okay. Yeah, so a Johnny's lethal next turn, as long as they don't have Hydrate Crisis. Okay, so they get two more cracks at it. Okay, 
Okay, so second Nisa. So it's a little scary just from a mana standpoint. But if they don't have a way to win. Yeah, the Thassa Elementals deck will be one that I, I play on the channel. Looks sweet. Steal all their stuff, blink it, and then I uh, get it back. Okay, Uro. Uro means they're not dead this turn, just from a life gain perspective. They sack that. They likely have enough to escape it this turn. Five, it's five. Oh no, they don't. They're short a card to escape it. And you destroy or exile? So the exile will be re relevant as well. See what they put the counter on. So I'm just gonna take them off the land here. Five damage doesn't make too much of a difference. So I'm letting them do this in part because then they can't do it next turn. And I think because they're up to 16, we take Nisa off the board. Who Pride Mate's a nice follow up after. So. Oh no, shit, it's 15 or more. Ah, crap, 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 I misread that. Shame scoop, shame scoop. I thought it was just... I screwed that up. We, should, we had to attack first and then go from it. Okay. Um, that one was bad. Um, so I don't think... I think we want the Owls, Tribunal's good, and do I want Glass Casket? That was an error. We had it, it's just I, we shouldn't have taken that five point hit. God's Willing isn't as necessary. I think we like everything else. This is more to deal with their big stuff. I think we just want Glass Casket. Yeah, you know, the flyers might be relevant here. Pride mates are fine. Probably just get rid of these beloved princesses. Actually, this gets through Nisa lands. Let me just cut down that. These can help us find like our exile effects. Question is, do I want glass cassettes early? I think we need to be more of the aggressor. Let's run it like that. I'm disappointed, we had that one. So we didn't take the five. I was thinking we were at a higher life total than we actually were. I should have paid attention to that. Um, I'm not crazy about this hand. We have Heliod and a removal spell, so I'll probably just keep it. Of note, our flyer, our one drop is not a lifelink one drop. And Grazer stops it now. So I'm just doing this. They might not block, they might think we have a pump. So 
So this turn is probably Heliod because they're probably going to Nisa next turn. This deck being able now to go 1, 3, 5 to Nisa is kind of absurd. This starts a lot worse. So we'll set up for next turn. I can give something lifelink and we can go from there. So Cavalier is definitely something we exile. The good thing is they poured over a bunch of elementals. Uro can get close to coming back. Okay, that's not bad. We do need to get Cavalier off the board. This also turns on Devotion here. If they want to trade here, then I'm fine. If not, I hold up the one mana. So now if they try to mass manipulation, I can sack to give protection. Um, here, let's just put it on the, the flyer. Pride Mate will naturally get larger. Druid will give them some card advantage. They're drawing a lot. Probably Arcana style this turn, try to find something like an exile style effect. That feels kind of lackluster to me. So not bad, gives us another land. They want to trade here, that's cool. We still have Devotion, one, two, three, four, we'll have it with our Kana style. And we're, we're looking for here is like a passivism style effect. The whiff is bad. There's a good density of spells to hit from the deck, especially post board. Still have three banishing lights, three conclave tribunals, three Daxos, some more Lindens. They have access to six mana. Nine mana. So like Krasis here gets pretty bad. They try to manipulation. Oh, Forerunner. Let's 
9, 12. It's pretty lackluster for a runner. I can gain a bunch of life back. Okay, Tribunal's good. Tribunal lets us get rid of the Nyx. So, another target creature. Uh, let's just make Pride Mate bigger. And then we'll get rid of... This scares me more just because they could triple their mana. They do have us. If they have mass manipulation, we lose. They steal Pride Mate and like Heliod. Attacking for eight. Can't really come back after that. Yeah. They got us there. We should have had game one. So it's worth noting, we gotta keep a hand with the life linker to start. That one is a little weird. I'm just gonna give Arena a quick reset and we'll pop into some more games, do a couple best of ones to see. Felt like we should have had that game one. So this deck, if you get like a one, like if you have Lin, uh, Daxos at two, Linden at three, you can draw like stupid amounts of life with the deck. Um, so it does help you in matchups like we took a and raise four runner and still had a decent life total. Okay, so this hand, no Heliod, and we're a little heavy on the four drops, but I do like Linden in this map, like, to cast. I don't think we want to aggressively mull to Heliod, plus we have Owl. That can help us dig to it as well. If we could gum up the board, then a Johnny does a good job with just creating tokens. They got the Chandra sleeves. Let's see if they're a red mage. Nope, more Simic. Okay, gives us a play on two at least. And pseudo protection. This is really annoying. Just always prompting if you want to sack it. Okay, so more ramp. Banishing light's not bad. It gives us something to get deal with some of their threats. So they have a block here, that's fine. It's just more about gaining life for a Johnny. So if we draw land, we get to a Johnny down tick for a pride mate, get three triggers from the attack and then two from the lifelink. So that becomes a 7-7 seven, seven the turn we cast it. Okay, bodes pretty well. This might just be a growth spiral turn. A little annoying. Needed the land there. We are playing 22. No sense of banishing like this. So actually the cool thing is if they cast Nisa this turn, they attack with it. Oh, okay, so they have black in their deck. So that is a Banishing Light target, if I ever saw one. If 
because if they had Nisa, they cast it, we could have given this pro green, I think is for the f uh, land. This lets us get in for five. So we have effectively unblockable with this, effectively unblockable with this. I wonder if this is like Yarrick. Yep. So Princess is kind of cool here because of the three toughness clause. Uh, it can be, it can get around Yarrick. And our life total is high enough now that if we draw the land to Johnny is a thing. I have protection if they want to try to kill something. This is Yarrick ETBs, so they got Cavalier. Okay, so I'm gonna kill Yarrick here. Because I can't kill him, they go up to 11. So I think taking Yarrick off the battlefield's correct. So they're only going to assign damage to Linden. So I can God's willing it. Uh, protection from black. Heliodes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know what? It doesn't matter. Um, here, like, I think we just wipe their board. Now nah, let's make a pride mate. Seven seven in one turn with the planeswalker. Casually at 43 life. Oh shit, because they get the double trigger. Okay. Banishing light. This one's tough because we got to get rid of I think from an aggression standpoint this closes at us out faster um, take this out Wonder if they have Thassa in this deck, most likely. It just 
haven't been able to close on a couple of these games. We've gotten to like just about dead. Ah, crap. Yeah, we lost. Once Thassa comes down, they just steal everything with Agent and they get two triggers each turn. So our board's basically gone. A couple turns just missing the line drop. Let's see what we crack. Eat to extinction. Let's run it for one more. I was thinking like what else we can add to this deck. Like I kind of want to just like splash red to it to see just for Embercleave. Sand is sweet. Hawk into Pride Mate into Pride Mate. Eventually into a Johnny. Flax and Intruder actually gets a lot better with so many enchantments going around. So next turn I go land, Princess Ajani, trigger both of them. And then if we draw another land, I get to go Ajani, plus make these even bigger. Get okay, the giant killer. Since that's the case, I'm doing this because it, it allows us to get around the tap ability after. Okay, or they just have two giant killers. I'm fine to just keep doing this. Edge wall. A little late to the party. Tribunal here. So it can't protect our Johnny. And they are mana short from protecting with or tapping with Giant Killer. Ooh, that's good. Let's us get in for a bunch here. Two more triggers. So this was kind of my concession. One of the, the kind of downsides with Pride Mate is you just get like a really big dummy. but you don't get um, evasion of any sort, no trample, anything like that. Interesting. So they don't go... They're just casting Giant Killer. Oh, you know what? They might be trying to overrun. No, they don't even overrun. Like I could poke you for two each turn. So 
So what I can do next turn, kind of don't even want to do it unless they're going to threaten us. Okay, Vanishing Light's good, because now this lets us a Johnny. I basically want to make as many threats as possible here. See what they tap. Okay, they don't tap. I'm just gonna attack with one of you. I just want to turn on uh, Life Link just to put another counter on them. Not playing out the land, there's no utility in doing so right now. I want to bluff like we have something. Oh, they convoke for 12. Okay. So they can gain 12 life. They can attack a Johnny. They can tap down with the three, our pride mates. I basically want them to overextend their, their green. So then I can try to give it pro. Interesting. That might be another tribunal or another thing. See what they do if it's another one because then it'd be 12, 15, 24. Do they have lethal? 36. Yeah, they got lethal. They just tap our stuff. Kind of crappy because they tap three of these. Oh, and they got the Flourish too. Yeah, we're super dead. Man, it's like four games where it's just like a turn or two away from victory. We got them down to one. Let's run it for one more. Get a feel for it. Some more castles would have been good. I think stuff like Gideon wouldn't be too bad. Post board, you'd have like Shatter the Sky. Yeah, keep this hand. We draw, we just need to draw lines. We draw lines, we're laughing. The tap line there is good too, because it lets us attack with this L seed. Without it dying, and then we have Pride Mate to trigger to go to three. It's a lot more Simic today than there was the past few days. Paradise Druid. Okay. Well. So I'm going to do this before Heliod. It makes our pride mate larger.
So Wolf Willow Haven. Uh, so it enters the battlefield. You get to tap it for an additional green mana, and for five mana on your turn, you can sacrifice it to create a 2-2 two -two wolf. Um, so they're using it as another growth spiral style effect. So opponents dead if they don't have a, a spell. They can petty theft us. Yeah, opponent's dead. Turn four? Yeah, turn four. So they're dead just from the attack trigger, not a lot, even the Heliod. So overall, that's the deck. I'll get it up on YouTube for those who missed any part of it. Um, not bad overall. Pretty happy just for it being budget, it can kind of run with some games. Uh, I think stuff like Unbreakable Formation would be good here. Um, maybe some Gideons as well. Adds two Devotion, can give lifelink, um, and kind of gives you pseudo uh, vigilance as well. I don't know if we want the Gods Willing more or less. Uh, the Princess was kind of whatever. For a budget it was fine. Fairy Godmothers probably just cu cut down a couple of these as well. Uh, giant killer would help a lot in the main um, i think just having a main board answer and removal is good and then donna hope would probably be something i would try out just for card advantage um so it's pretty much less let me know what you think have this up on youtube and i think i'm gonna wrap this one up might be back later tonight with another list um, if not catch you later thanks for stopping by and have a great week